time tonight. Uh, Tom Barkley, do you want to get us away? Grab a microphone. The microphone's around. Yep, thank you. Hi, Ollie. Tom Barkley from The Sun. Just, just on from that with <coughs> Una Emery. I mean, you haven't got his phone number. Uh, compared to Gareth, I mean, you're talking about the differences between them. I mean, he, he, you talked about this season being the season of your life. Can you just talk a bit more about what Unai has done for your season, even if you don't quite have the same close relationship as you do with the England manager? You know, I think for a start, he believed in me. So uh, the back end of the previous season, not last season, but the season before, I had a really good run of games and he had filled me with a lot of confidence, um, said I was his main man and uh, he wasn't going to sign another striker. So for a start, when a manager comes in, that makes you obviously feel good. It came over into the, the, the following season and he said to me uh, in a pre before preseason, he wanted me and the other striker to get, I think it was 55 goals between us. Uh, there was not another, not another striker. So <laughs> we didn't quite do that, but uh, I felt like I played my part and obviously setting the, setting them goals for me, um, I think really helped me. He's got that belief in me and, and, and I've got that belief in myself. So it's nice that a manager has that belief and, um, and, and trust me, but also he's, I feel like the team is, is, is built perfect for me the way I want to play and, uh, the way he wants to play. I feel like we've, we've, uh, got a good relationship. So, um, I love being, at, I love being, at, I'm loving being at Villa. Um, and yeah, I, I enjoy playing under him. And just secondly, you asked about the friendly between your two old clubs tonight. I know you don't look back too much, but yesterday on Lions Den, you said the non-league days were some of your favourite days. Mm -hmm. One. Um, one memory. Yeah, I think uh, it was probably we played Ebb's Fleet away. I scored. Um, I actually ran off. I think pulling my shirt up and there was one fan in the uh, away end. Um, <laughs> that was my first goal for Western. Ebb's Fleet, I think, had a really big budget at that time. Um, we were fighting to stay up and we had a long bus journey. Um, JR, bless him, who's passed away now, was the kit man and he used to make us um, potato and uh, beans and cheese on the, uh, on the bus. Um, so yeah, just memories like that is, is definitely very different. You know, him making us, uh, pre-match on the bus, you know, we've got a half cooked potato, uh, with some beans out of a tin It's on rations. Um, and then we turn up and play. I can remember one of the lads turned up, um, to the bus and he had paint all over his hands cause he had just been painting before uh before <laughs> that was his main job so he'd just been painting before we um we traveled to a game and yeah it's just simple things like that but um yeah it was, it was really good times hi ollie um harry kane said an interesting thing um last week i think it was before the game against um switzerland when he said he was asked about how england had found a way through progressed without playing as well as they could. And he said that he thinks over the years now, England have built up an aura. Mm -hmm. Others, he was implying that other teams, even if England aren't playing well, probably not so much scared of them, but as of weary of what they can do. Do you think, do you agree with that? This team has now got that winning aura. Do you feel that going into the final? Yeah, I feel if it was related to uh, club football, I feel like as you see someone like Real Madrid in a, in the Champions League game, you know, they're comfortable without the ball, uh, but they have that confidence that when they get the ball, they're going to score. So I feel like it's the same here. You know, we're definitely hard to beat. Um, then we just need that one chance and um, we can win the game. So it doesn't matter if we're playing poorly or players are having an off day. We still have that world-class talent where we can pop up and um, and get that goal. Okay, Malik. And then Nick. Hi, Ali. Um before the tournament, Gareth said all along the reason he brought both you and Ivan is because you've got different skills for different games and he'd use each of you where he saw fit. But when you see Ivan come on and have the impact he had in the last 16, score the penalty, mm -hmm. does any bit of you worry, he's number two now, I'm, I'm not going to get my chance? No, I feel like there were certain games, I was saying to Dean Henderson, um, I can't remember which game it was where he sat Harry Kane up. Who was that against? 
Sorry. Slovakia. I said to Dean, I said, uh, like, if, if I'm not coming on here, he needs to put Ivan on because we, we're going to go direct. Um, and then he did. Thought it was going to be too late, to be honest. But then Jude pops up with the overhead kick um, and then Ivan sets up Harry Kane. So there's no bitterness whatsoever. Um, I was so pleased for Ivan. There's certain times where it's better suited for Ivan to come on the pitch if we're going more direct. Um, and then there's certain times where it's better for me where, you know, the game's more open and I can run in behind and um, affect the game in, in a different way. So we both have different attributes. And, and to be honest, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, the boss didn't just choose one of us. Um, he brought all three of us because I feel like we've, obviously had massive parts to play in this competition and um, it was a great decision bringing all three of us. Get okay, Nick. Hi Ollie. Um congrats and good luck of course. Um, you mentioned Jude just then and if we're, if we're talking about magic moments you've obviously provided a, a massive one and Jude did a couple of games before. Um, he's he's been talked about in terms of winning the Ballon d'Or if he has a, a great game in the final or if we win that kind of thing. I mean firstly hypothetically wouldn't that be great? And also, secondly, could, could you talk a bit about how he's developed as a member of the squad, as, um, as, as an influence, as a teammate over his sort of two or three years that you've been in the camp with him? Yeah, I think for a start, I think whatever happens, you should win the Ballon d'Or uh, for the way he's played. Um, he plays with such maturity, um, confidence, aura, um, I can't speak any highly of him, um, to be honest. But yeah, to see him uh, transition from from where he was, obviously I played with him, I played against him at Birmingham, and even the way he played then, you would have thought he was a seasoned pro. Had played a number of games, um, and I remember being in one of the camps, one of my earlier camps. I think he was 16 at the time, and he still had confidence uh, about him. And it's no surprise really to see what he's he's gone on and done. Thanks, Nick. Okay, Rob Draper, and then finish with Jerry. Hi, Ollie. I was, I was going to ask you about Ebb's fleet away, but um, instead, can I ask you about another game? Um, Reading Reserve, Ex- Reserves, the season after, because even after um, West, it, it was quite difficult going back to Exeter. Paul Tisdale said he'd spoke to you during that game, changed your position a bit, gave you a few extra instructions, and chucked you straight in the deep end for the Plymouth Derby. <laughs> on the Saturday and you had a great game. Do you, do you remember that and just that sense of step by step you've kind of got there but those moments, are, uh, those sliding doors moments are quite important. Yeah, I can remember there was quite a few times, you know, I played in a reserve team game and and I played quite well and then that put me in contention for a, um, to start. Uh, I can remember that clear as, clear as day and yeah, I think we won 2-0 away at, um, home park that was my first start and um, it all went it all went upwards from there ok I'm going to finish with Jerry Lawson right at the back if we can get a microphone to him thank you hi Ollie Jerry from the start uh, best of luck tomorrow everybody's supporting you as you know tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> Sunday um, what I was going to say was um is this the kind of game that Gareth Southgate doesn't have to really say much to you to build you up to play in? Is it in, in some ways trying to keep you down because of the enormity of the game? I was just wondering what the sort of team attitude to it was. Everybody must be looking forward to it so much. No, not really. We're, you know, we're preparing like we have for, for every game um, so far, you know, doing the tactical work, doing the important um, research on on how they play uh, and what we can do to to hurt them. And you know, I think it, sh- it shouldn't be trying to calm us down. I think everyone's excited. Everyone can't wait to get out onto that pitch and play. And uh, we've got a, a real belief. And I feel like that's that's what you need. You need to have a belief going into the game and confidence. You know, going into a final and that team spirit. And I feel like that's what we've got. So. You know, everyone's fully focused on Sunday and um, and doing it all they can to prepare for the game correctly. You had this amazing premonition uh, before you scored of what was going to happen uh, for the last game. And uh, I think Cole Palmer was stu- as stunned by it as, as anything. Uh, do you have a premonition for uh, for Sunday's game? Uh, I can't re- I, I can't reveal that right now. I, I have to... Uh... 
I have to say it to uh, one of my teammates on the on the pitch or before the game. So um, yeah, we'll we'll see if I if I get it correct, and uh, then I can tell you in an interview after. Fantastic. Just finally, um, Sven Goran Eriksson, former England manager, mm-hmm. um, has issued an open letter today to Gareth, urging him to um, to basically bring it home. And he said he wants him to succeed where 13 other managers has failed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just trying to, um, basically he said um, that you need to believe England can win this. Uh, and if you believe anything can happen. Uh, it seems to me you have that actual belief yourself that you can actually almost will things to happen. Is that something that you're going to be focused on ahead of the match? Yeah, I think you need to have that belief in yourself, you know, that self-confidence. Um, there's going to be times where you, you may doubt yourself, but, uh, that's just a thought that crosses your mind. And, um, you know, if you believe anything can happen, I went onto the pitch believing that I was going to score the other night. Um, like I said, I told Carl I was going to score and, and I, and I made it happen. But, um, yeah, I think if you can believe anything is possible. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, for those of you looking to grab a word with Conor Gallagher for the broadcast, if you head out to the courtyard now and set up around the pod out there, he'll be arriving shortly. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Abby.